Hey guys, this is AC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is what are the gas pressures for natural gas and propane where they enter into the appliance app. So most residential buildings will have low pressure gas coming into the building. Uh, I say most, but not all. It really depends on the city in which you live and the codes in which they adopted. Commercial buildings could have low pressure gas coming in or high pressure gas, and then they just have a regulator right in front of the appliance in order to lower the pressure down or they might have one large regulator for all the lines once they get to a certain point in the building. Now this is a low pressure gas valve and they typically come from the factory as natural gas. If the technician wants to uh, convert that in order to run propane, that's what you would do. But if this is running natural gas, it would have five to eight inch water column coming into the gas valve. Water columns are 27.6 water column equals one PSIG. So PSIG is pounds per square inch gauge. If you had propane running into this, you should have 11 to 13 inch water column coming in uh, because basically what this gas valve is doing is it's regulating the output pressure and on a single speed propane uh, gas valve, they typically have an output of 10 inch water column. But you're always going to set that uh, per manufacturer's instructions. So as you can see, propane is right under half a PSIG. So half a PSIG would be about 13.8 water column, and propane is about 11 to 13 inch water column. So it's right under the max amount of gas pressure that's allowed to come into this gas valve. Natural gas being five to eight inch water column, that's about a quarter of a PSI. The low pressure gas valves found in a residential house are all half PSI, such as the fireplace, the dryer, the range, water heater, the furnace, or boiler. And if there's too much pressure coming in, these little solenoids inside the low pressure gas valve will get damaged and then they won't seal right. So for a manual gas valve that's feeding a half PSI max gas valve, they have to be stamped with half a PSI. So these are used all in residential buildings. And even though it's, it has this, it actually has a higher pressure rating uh, at 600 PSIG for a WOG. So this is rated for water, oil, or gas but this type of valve is going to typically be used for gas inside of a building. So they just need to have that stamp on it to conform to their testing standards. Here's an example of a water heater gas valve and this one right here says max pressure half a PSI. So once again, any type of appliance inside the house cannot have higher than half a PSI running into it. This gas valve right here even has a stamp on it that states that do not pressure test piping with this valve connected. Damage in unsafe conditions may result half a PSI max pressure. So if you're pressure testing with something like this, doing an air pressure test or carbon dioxide or nitrogen pressure test, you cannot have your appliances connected. They have to be disconnected. And by code, you can't even just shut the valves off. You have to actually disconnect the piping and put your cap or plug in. So if you're going to do an air pressure test or nitrogen or carbon dioxide pressure test, then you need to make sure that your appliances are disconnected and you can use a 15 pound or 30 pound pressure gauge. So there's three parameters for doing a pressure test. One is that the pressure that you test it to has to be over one and a half times the pressure that's going to be running in the line from the propane or natural gas. The second thing is it has to be above three PSIG. So the third thing is it has to be higher than one fifth of the gauge range. So if you take 30 PSIG and you divide that by five, you equal six PSIG. So that's why we pressure test with a 30 pound pressure gauge at six to seven PSIG. If you use a 15 pound pressure test, then you can get away with just pressure testing it at four PSIG. The reason for that is just that any, in, any fluctuation in the pressure, you wanna make sure you're above that three PSIG minimum. And in reference to pressure testing and gas line sizing and all the other safety standards, I would highly encourage you to read the International Fuel Gas Code book. Now, when we're checking our inlet gas pressure to an appliance, you see that this arrow is facing inwards. You can actually check the inlet gas pressure with a digital manometer. So if we were to check the tap right here for a natural gas, unit we should be reading right around five to eight inch water column and over on this side we check the outlet gas pressure over on the other side. So on this gas valve you see that it runs 3.5 for high and for low it runs 1.5 inch water column. So they run very very low 
uh, pressures for the flame. We usually use our ratcheting service wrench, that we, the same thing we use for our air conditioning service valves. That's what we use in order to pull our plugs out, in order to put our brass barb fitting in, in order to check our gas pressure. This is my favorite uh, water column manometer right here, and this is what I also use for testing pressure switches, but you can also have more of a simpler version, such as this one right here, or a two-port version. Uh, make sure you're working for a licensed plumber or licensed HVACR master technician before checking gas pressures. Another thing that we do is we'll take our brass barb fitting and we'll tap it into a half inch cap, a three quarter cap, and a one inch cap, and that's what we can use to check our gas pressure at the drip tee in front of the appliances. But I have all the tools in the brass barb fitting linked down in the description below. If you want to help support this HVACR training channel, click right here. If you want to subscribe, click right here. And if you want to see another HVACR training video, click right here. Hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.